We all rely on our phones. Until you're on the mountains, at a crowded festival, or the network goes down during a storm. In that moment, no service means, no coordination, no updates, and no way to reach anyone. But instead of buying another gadget, what if you could... 3D print your own communicator. One that still works when everything else goes down. In this video, I will show you how to build it for around $30, powered by open source tech and your own 3D printer. Because this thing is probably far more capable than you think. Hi, my name is Niels and you're watching Perspective 3D. The idea for this project didn't start in my studio. It started on YouTube. I stumbled upon a viral video called It's Been a Good Run Phone Providers that already had over 5 million views. In this video, a creator called Data Slayer showed a tiny gadget that could send text messages without phone network. Basically, like the pagers that existed in the past, but without the service costs. And what really caught my attention was that these little devices could communicate over several miles completely off-grid. And when I saw that you could assemble it yourself and even 3D print the case, I was immediately hooked. But the video raised some questions. How can these small devices send messages over multiple miles with no SIM card, Wi-Fi or provider involved? And more importantly, is this even legal? The secret lies in something called LoRa, short for Long Range. It's low power radio technology originally designed for sensors and weather stations and other IoT devices that only need to send small bits of data, but over surprisingly long distances. Let me shortly explain because this part is important for the rest of the video. Take Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for example. They are like two people talking in a room, fast, clear, but easily blocked by a wall. LoRa is more like birds chirping across a valley. Each signal is slower and carries less data, but it can travel far beyond what Wi-Fi ever could. That also means it uses way less power. In Europe, it runs on 868 MHz, in the US on 915. Both license-free bands that anyone can use legally. MeshTastic is the open source software above that brings these LoRa boards into life and turns them into a so-called mesh network. Each device acts both as sender and repeater, passing messages from one node to the next. The more nodes you have, the wider the reach. And because these devices use so little power, they can run for days and even weeks on a small battery. In short, MeshTastic transforms simple radio modules into a self-organizing network that keeps every node connected to the others. But what does it actually take to make one of these? The first step is choosing the right hardware. On the official MeshTastic homepage, you will find a full list of supported boards. And it's worth checking because compatibility makes the setup much easier. I went with the Heltec T114 board. It's affordable, it supports GPS and can charge a battery directly via USB-C. And most importantly, there's an excellent 3D printable case for it by MusiWorks on printables, complete with a full bill of materials. There are also plenty of alternative case designs on printables or MakerWorld if you prefer a different look. And since range depends heavily on the antenna, I replaced the stock one with a larger model and the link is in the description. The only remaining component is the battery. Speaking of size, that's the main thing to look out for when buying one. Just make sure you pick the right dimensions and if you want to avoid soldering, get one with the correct connector already attached. That's something I had to learn the hard way as you will see in a moment. With the electronics chosen, it's time to 3D print the shell and start bringing the communicator to life. I printed two cases, one in green PLACF and one in purple regular PLA. Both printed out okay without support, despite some small defects around the buttons on the green one. The button covers were printed separately in PEBA, a flexible high performance filament that's perfect for frequent presses. Check out my video on this filament if you haven't seen it yet. And before we move on to the assembly and the small mistake I made, a quick thanks for today's sponsor, JLC 3DP. If you ever wanted to try industrial printing like multi-jet fusion, laser sintering or even metal printing without paying enterprise prices, this is the service to go. For this project, I printed two additional versions of the case through JLC 3DP. 
one in PA12 nylon for a super strong heat resistant shell and one in 3D printed titanium, my doomsday proof communicator case. Because why not? The process is simple. Upload your model, pick the process and material and then check out. On the side, every material has a clear explanation of its properties and strengths, so you can choose what fits your project best. And after you submit, a JLC 3DP technician sanity checks your file for the chosen process to make sure it's printable before anything goes into production. And during checkout, you can choose between different shipping options, including ones where JLC 3DP handles all customs and taxes upfront. So there are no surprises. It honestly couldn't be easier. And if you want to try it yourself, use my link in the description. There are coupons waiting to bring the price down. Thanks JLC 3DP for supporting my channel. And now we can start the assembly process. Unfortunately, I had to solder a new connector to my battery. So if you want to skip that step, buy one with a 1.25 mm JST2 pin connector pre-installed. Once that was solved, assembly went smoothly. Until I discovered I've forgotten to insert the buttons. Don't repeat that mistake, insert the buttons first and then start unscrewing and fitting the rest. A few prints, some light soldering and careful assembly later, you've got a fully built mesh tester communicator ready for the last step. And to bring our communicator to life, we need to flash the Meshtastic firmware. And it's much easier than it sounds. Open the official Meshtastic web flasher in a Chromium-based browser, connect the device via USB-C, double press the reset button to enter flash mode. Now you choose your board in the browser and download the correct firmware from the flasher page. All you need to do then is drag and drop it onto the mounted drive and wait for the transfer to complete. The device will reboot then and show you the welcome screen and that's the moment our communicator officially comes alive. It's a surprisingly polished experience for an open source project. You can go from bare hardware to a fully working communicator in just a few minutes. Now with the device ready, you might wonder what you can actually do with the device. No keyboard to send messages and only two buttons? The most common way to interact with your device is by pairing it with the Meshtastic app on your phone or tablet. Inside the app, you must do the basic setup right after flashing the firmware. Setting your frequency region, EU868 or US915 is the most important step. Once connected via Bluetooth or USB, you use the Meshtastic app to type and read messages just like in any regular chat. And after that, you might already see other Meshtastic devices called nodes appear on the map or even start receiving your first message automatically. I won't go into every setting here, but I will link some excellent YouTube tutorials below that walk you step by step through the configuration if you want to explore more advanced features. It may sound a bit odd to pair your phone just to send messages, but here it's only the interface, not the network. Even with Wi-Fi and cellular data turned off, you can still send and receive messages completely off-grid through Mesh Testing. You could also buy a dedicated device like the LilyGo TDEC Plus which already includes a small screen and keyboard. It runs Meshtastic natively, so you don't need a phone at all. But where's the fun in that? We wanted a 3D printing project, right? With everything running, the time has come to answer the probably most important question. How far can these little devices actually talk? To find out, I set up one communicator in range test mode in the window of our office kitchen on the third floor. The device sent a message every 15 seconds, counting up each time. I grabbed a second one, walked outside and started moving away. To my surprise, even after 800 meters, messages kept coming through. The signal finally dropped just past one kilometer. Impressive for a tiny low powered board running on a few milliwatts in a dense city. It really shows how efficient the LoRa modulation is at picking up even weak signals. Of course, you trade bandwidth for range. These devices only send short text messages, not images or files. But that's exactly why the system works so well over long distances. And that was just a simple one-to-one -one test. In a real mesh network, other nodes act as relays, forwarding your message automatically to extend the range even further. During one of my tests, I even managed to reach devices 30 or 40 kilometers away, not directly, but through a chain of other nodes working together. So in the end, you might be asking yourself, what did I learn from this video? For me, this project proves that 3D printing isn't just about making things that look good. 
it's about creating things that work, practical, reliable and genuinely fun to make. If this slightly different video was entertaining or maybe even inspiring, let me know in the comments, I really like to hear your thoughts. And if you like to see more practical 3D printing projects like this one, a quick thumbs up or subscription really helps me decide which direction to take next. Thanks for watching, take care and see you in the next one.